Hi everyone, so today I have another really fun problem for you and today we are going to be discussing about calculus, more specifically limits and we are actually going to see how, uh, how this concept of limit works, right? How can we approach problems involving limits? Which, uh, and yeah, this is a problem, this is the problem number 7 from the ISA entrance exam in 2022 and in this video we are going to be learning about uh, solving problems involving limits. We are going to look at the standard way to solve limits of the form 1 is for infinity which is around the seven indeterminate forms in mathematics. Then we obviously have some book suggestions for the ISS CMI and then uh, at the end we have a similar but charged problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Let's begin. So we have p of x defined as 1 plus 2x plus 7x squared plus 7x cubed. And we have to calculate this limit for all x belongs to real numbers. So whenever you have a limit, and uh, limits is one of the common calculus problems in ISS EMI, and whenever you really see a limit, one thing that you can maybe do is actually see what value that limit tends to, or what indeterminate form the limit, given limit is forming, right? Okay, so we have p of x is 1 plus 2x plus 7x squared plus 13x cubed. That's excellent because p of x by n would then be nothing but 1 plus 12, twice of x by n plus 7 times x by n whole squared plus 13 times x by n whole cube. Right? And if I just raise this to the nth power, that would be 1 plus 2 times of x by n plus 7 times of x by n whole square and this term with the 13 is part n. Now if I take this limit as n tends to infinity on both sides, I will actually get 1 to the infinity on the right hand side. Now why is that true? Because if you notice n is on the denominators in these three terms, right? And um, when that is the case, when n is uh, basically the denominator, what essentially happens is that as it tends to infinity, the denominator is really large. Right? And whenever you have a really large quantity in the denominator, the entire fraction tends to zero. For example, 1 raised to the power 1 million, or no, 1 raised to the power of a really high quantity compared to 1, this roughly tends to zero, right? It's going to be very, very, very small quantity. So essentially, all of these terms would tend to zero, and this would eventually converge to 1 raised to the power infinity of that form, essentially of the limit. Okay, so now that we have deduced the radius of the form 1 is for infinity, let us look at a standard way or one of the more common ways to solve such indeterminate quantities. This is one of the seven indeterminate quantities in mathematics, in limits. And uh, to solve this, we essentially use a fact or essentially use uh, a property of logarithms, which essentially says that for any number k, any number k can essentially be represented as a to the power log k to the base a. Right? So, any number m can be written as e raised to the power ln m, right? As ln is natural log with base e, so this is essentially the same thing. And if we use that, we can actually solve this problem fairly easily now. Now, first we observe that uh, p of x by n can be written as 1 plus p of x by n minus 1. Right? This seems actually quite trivial, but let's actually see how this helps us. Now, p of x by n raised to the power n would be equal to 1 plus p of x by n minus 1 raised to the power n. And now I want to write this in the logarithmic form, in the exponential form as I had shown you earlier. So this quantity on the left hand side can essentially be written as e raised to the power ln 1 plus p of x by n minus 1 raised to the power n, which is nothing but e raised to the power n ln 1 plus p of x by n minus 1. Okay, now well, what do we do next? So next, uh, well, there's something called as a Maclaurin series or the expansion of ln 1 plus x. This gives us x minus x squared by 2 plus x cubed by 3 and so on and so forth. This expansion of ln 1 plus x are, uh, is called as a Maclaurin series. Maclaurin series is nothing but the Taylor series centered about a is equal to 0. That's a single point of the series. So if you know this expansion, this can actually become uh, pretty trivial from now. So uh, I'm just going to write uh, ln 1 plus x as this and in our case in the problem in the problem we essentially had e raised to the power n times ln of 1 plus a certain quantity p of x by n minus 1 so 1 plus this this, this quantity over here right 
So now writing it in the form uh, that is given to us using the expansion, we will get e is for n and this uh, would become nothing but 2x by n plus 7x squared by n, we, uh, n squared actually, plus 13x cubed by n cubed and uh, certain other terms, right? And this now if you take limit as n tends to infinity of this, which is asked in the question of uh, this given quantity 2x by n plus 7x squared by n squared and so on and so forth, you would uh, essentially get the limit as n tends to infinity of e raised power 2x plus 7x squared by n plus 13x cubed by n squared dot dot dot. So now like I explained before, this quantity, if we have a, a, a quantity tending to infinity on the denominator, all of these things would be equal to zero. That essentially just leaves us with e raised power 2x, which would be the correct answer. So therefore the limit as n tends to infinity of p of x by n raised power n is equal to e raised power 2x, which is the correct solution. So I hope you really like that and I hope that you Kind of got the idea of how to solve limits especially the indeterminate quantity one raised for infinity okay so after that we have certain book sessions for calculus and ISSEMI. we have pre-calculus by tarasov single variable calculus by maron playing with grass which comes in uh, which is printed by the arihan publication challenges and thrills of pre-college mathematics mathematical circles excursion mathematics and a test of mathematics with 10 plus 2 level and at the end we have a similar but challenging problem and it's basically asking us uh, to find all possible real values of t such that it starts with this given limit and it's given that a is a real valid function such that uh, this limit actually holds true so yeah as usual uh, just try this problem and let me know if you made any progress on it or if you're able to solve it and i'll respond to you until then i'll see you in the next video bye bye Tinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.